Hello all, how are we doing today everybody? Welcome back to Human Design Time. My name is Donald Groves and we'll be talking about the series of authorities. Um, if you're not familiar with human design, go to my website, 86worries.com or my Instagram at, at 86worriesofficial. There is a plethora of information for you to check out. Uh, if you have any questions whatsoever, my website, 86worries.com, you'll be able to click in one of those links and it'll get to me in my email. Now, we started recently about uh, the series of authorities. Before, the first one we talked about sacral authority, and last week we talked about the splenic authority. So those are fairly common authorities, and they're both in the gut. However, we're gonna talk about the most common one today. Today's authority is going to be the emotional solar plexus. Now, the solar plexus on a human, on our human design chart, it determines whether we are putting out emotions into the world or if we're taking in emotions into the world. So a defined solar plexus is a little triangle off to the side on the chart. And a defined solar plexus, here, I think I actually have a, I actually have my book right here. And a defined solar plexus is right here. That would be the solar plexus on the human design chart, okay? And so when it's colored in like that, that means it's a defined. That means it puts out energy, the emotions. That means that more than likely, that is your authority. If it's not colored in, that means that it's undefined. That means you're more of an empath. But we wanna talk about the colored in solar plexus. We wanna talk about the emotional authority. What is an authority? So authority in human design is basically your guiding light in this world. It is your yes and no center. Your authority is your checking in area before you really follow through with anything big in our life. So before we talked about the sacral authority, it is absolutely imperative to pay attention to your gut feelings and stuff. The splenic authority along the same lines. This week though, talking about the solar plexus authority, we wanna pay attention to our emotions. Our emotional state is determined by our solar plexus and human design. What is human design? Human design is the, the personality and the design side, the sun and the moon in a sense. I like to call your design side the whisper side. However though, what it is is truly a blueprint. A blueprint of who you are. Um, we do a lot of shadow work in our life to really understand who we are, right? Because until we don't fully accept all aspects of ourselves, we're not completely whole. We're not completely integrated. And what's beautiful about human design is we integrate into the whole by understanding every single channel, by understanding every single energy that we put out into this world as the human that we're this vehicle that we are. And that's a quick synopsis of what human design is. Um, if you want to know more about human design, like I said, head over to 86worries.com. That's my website. And check it out. I have a bunch of information on there about human design. Um, if you want to go further with it, just message me or DM me and we'll talk about it. So let's get into it. The emotional solar plexus. If you are someone who has a defined solar plexus in their human design chart, you are someone that has either high emotions or low emotions. Um, and that's what it is. It's a wave. That's what it boils down to when you have a defined solar plexus. You are someone who has those emotional waves. And that's tough because you have those high highs and you have those low lows. And it's difficult being raised by individuals who do not have that because you're taught your whole life that your emotions are not validated. Your emotions are, you're overreacting. Uh, that you should think about how you wanna act before you're going to express these emotions. It's difficult when we're raised like that because we're taught to ignore these emotions. Now, a lot of individuals have a tough time dealing with their emotions because that's how they're raised. However, the solar plexus authority, the emotional authority in human design is one of the most common authorities in human design. There are more emotional creatures out there than they want to let on to be. They choose to let logic or how to teach themselves with logic. But what's important today is let's talk about 
how to handle, not handle, but how to work with the energy of those high and low emotions. It's absolutely imperative to not make decisions when you're on your high or your low. You gotta stop because here, when you, the, the worst one, so everyone thinks when you're super depressed that you shouldn't make decisions. I agree with that. But people believe that when they're feeling really good and feeling really happy that it's okay to make decisions. It is not. It is not. Because when we are in a really high place, when we're in that manic mode and we're feeling great, we make decisions that are not beneficial for ourselves because we are forgetting about those low lows. We're forgetting about those moments where things were not that good. And the reason why things were not that good was more than likely we made a decision when we we're in manic mode, when we we're super happy and we're just thriving like, woo, everything is great. It's because we we do not have the capability of remembering those moments of suffering. We cannot remember when we're in a super high manic place, we do not remember what it was like during those low moments. That's rough. That's why it's more dangerous to make decisions when you're in a manic mode than a depressed mode. Because in manic mode, we forget about that suffering we just went through before. So next time you're on that high high, we gotta wait to get into that middle. And so that's the thing about riding out the waves of the emotional authority. Wait for the high high to come down to the middle. Wait for that low low to come back up. So number one thing that you can do as the emotional solar plexus authority is patience to wait. And if you know that sounds true to you is because it's probably one of the hardest things for you to do is to be patient. Can you be patient? It's important to stand up for yourself because a lot of people are going to pressure you. You have a business meeting, you have a speech to give, you have to meet up for a dinner party, all these things. But if you don't really want to do it, it's going to be difficult because you're going to send yourself into a manic or a low. All you have to say is simply, I need more time. I need to sleep on this before you make any decisions. Never make another decision when you're in your high or when you're in your low. Okay, because those waves, those waves are not truly, when you're in one of those or you're down low, that's your mind. You're not listening, you're not listening to the gut. And that's an important thing to do with your solar plexus authority is to pay attention to your gut. Your gut knows best because it's all in that area. So you really wanna pay attention to your gut feeling when it comes to that, especially projectors and manifestors. Pay attention to that that feeling you get before you make a decision, as long as you're not thinking, overthinking it, as long as you're not in that manic, as long as you're not in that depressed place. But here's something very vital to understand. Whether the emotion is created by unhealthy thinking or not, the emotion is still existing in that moment, okay? So here is the one thing that no one teaches us when we're children with these authorities. It's okay that you're feeling what you're feeling. It is okay that you're expressing these emotions, whether it's a manic expression or a super negative, or not negative, but a super uh, depressed feeling you're putting out, it's happening. As a solar plexus authority, as an emotional authority, it is absolutely vital to let the emotion flow. We have to let the emotion flow. Reason being is you are an emotional creature. The moment you try to bottle up that emotion is the moment that you're cutting yourself off from your authority. The moment that you cut yourself off your authority, you're no longer on your path of authenticity. The emotions are happening. Whether they're healthy thoughts or not that created that emotion, at this moment, it doesn't matter. The emotional wave has begun. And as the solar plexus authority, you will have those waves. So what do we do? How do we work with this high emotion that happens or this low emotion? What do we do? 
we wait. Your largest, most helpful friend you will ever have is to wait, to be patient. And I mean this because if you make a decision when you're those highs or lows, it is not an accurate decision. You are making one out of the mind place and not your gut place. This is not uh, in the moment. This is not a now. This is not a now authority. Like the sacral. The sacral authority is more in the moment of now. The splenic authority is more in the moment of now. But this, this is if you are not in the center of being calm, you are not in touch with your authority. However, the emotions are happening. So what we can do is we can sleep on it. Okay. This is probably the best thing we can do. If you have to make a decision and you're in a high place or a low place, go ahead and sleep on it. You do not have to do anything ever. You, unless you're forced with a decision. And once again, there are scenarios that are out of our hands sometimes because where we are in our life, we've lost control and just stuff is happening, right? It just happens. It really does. So with understanding that, it's taking control of the fact that we know that sometimes our emotions are out of our control. What do we do? We wait. Wait for getting into that middle place and then re-ask yourself that thing that you want to do. Once you've gotten into that middle ground of understanding that I am more calm, I am not freaking out, I'm not super sad, but I'm in that calm place. Now, now I can go ahead and make a decision on what we're going to do with this authority. And it's absolutely vital to work with your authority. In human design, working with your authority is absolutely the number one thing. We have all these energy gateways, but with each gateway, we must follow our authority and our strategy. The strategy that, that will come along with this authority is either patience, waiting to respond, or waiting for the invitation. Those are the three strategies that are going to come along with this authority. The reason being is you have to wait for the emotion to become even keel. Or the decision that you're going to make is not going to be 100% accurate. Regardless of that, though, time. You need time. You need the time to calm. I don't like to say calm down, but you need the time to find an even place. You need the time to rethink what has been going on before we, I don't want to say ruin it, but I know for a fact I've had a client or two that has ended a relationship, a beautiful relationship, because they made it from their manic place in their, in, their, in their emotional wave. Or they quit a job because of the lowness of their wave. They didn't use time. They didn't wait to really feel it out. They didn't sleep on it. And the same thing goes for work. The same thing goes for relationships. Sleep on it before you make that life-changing decision. Now, what's really cool is there are three types of emotional waves. Now, in human design, there are gateways. And here, let me show you once again with the picture. Okay? So inside of these, we have different gateways. Those gateways can either connect to another gateway that makes a channel. And what that channel means is that's a specific type of energy that is connected together from energy to energy, to chakra to chakra. We're all familiar with chakras, I'm assuming, in this group. Most everyone I know that works in this group or pays attention to this group has worked in Reiki or worked in chakras at one point or another. So, the first, the first circuit, the first channel that, or the first wave that works for the emotional is called the individual circuit. This means that you are more moody. If, are you a moody person? Hmm? Do you just get upset? This is definitely a more moody type than any other design, okay? Uh, with that being said, you have those highs and lows, but more than anything, an individual circuit, you are a deep, 
deep diver. You get, you get into this emotional feeling and you just dive deep into it. What's really cool about the individual circuit though is that you have the full access, the full range of emotions with this. That means that your highs are super high and your lows are very low, but it's all on you as the individual. Meaning that before this stuff happens, it goes through the head center and it goes through the ajna or your thought center before it gets down to the solar plexus. But remember, this is not accurate. Down here in your gut, that's accurate. You want to listen to your gut. Now, the second type of emotional wave in this field is called the tribal circuit. Well, what is tribal? The tribe, the, your community, your family. The tribal circuit means that your high highs and low lows are, are being affected by the community that you're in. With that being said, you are connected more to sexual behaviors. You are connected more to family. You are someone who is taking care of your family. More than likely with this circuitry and this channel connection, you are someone who takes care of family. However, you let your family also determine your emotional state. Do you let your family members get you upset, get you all riled up? And you're like, ah, stop it. And you just get all riled up. You get really worked up about your tribe. If this is more about you. So this circuit is the 19 and 49 gate. Those two gates connect. Or the 59 to 6 gates. That channel connects. But these channels are about your tribe. Are you someone who lets your tribe, who lets your community alter the way you feel do you have your emotional waves because of your family because of your community if your community truly affects you emotionally it's something to look into remember before we make decisions we have to wait time is our best friend we have to wait to get into that middle ground we have to wait to feel not manic not depressed but calm Calm is our friend. Patience is our friend. Time is our best friend. We need time with this authority. The third collective, the third circuit, the third channel, the third wave of emotional solar plexus authority is the collective circuit. Now, that being said, your emotional energy is the type that skyrockets like you well, woo, you feel amazing. And your energy, you go into manic mode. However, it's not long until bah, you crash. This specific wave, this specific channel, this circuitry that we have in our design is called the collective circuit. You, you spike into manic very easily, but you crash just as hard, just as fast. What's cool about this though is cool or difficult, is you'll go quite a while with being, I don't wanna say fine, because there's no such thing as fine. Everyone's different, right? So what's cool about this is you'll go through a long period of being calm, and then out of nowhere, bam, you have this emotional outburst, woo! Out of nowhere, you feel like it's out of nowhere, but it's been building up over a period of time. And when this happens, we begin to get into that manic place. And what did I just say about being manic? Manic is one of the worst places that you can make a decision. If you can help it, never ever make another decision when you're in a manic place. When you are feeling the, the world is, you're on top of the world. We have to stay away from decision making from there. Reason is because the moment that we're in that high place, we forget about those low lows. When we are feeling good and everything is going great and we... There's a difference between life is good and wow, life is amazing, this is amazing, this is so this is manic. We forget about those low lows. So it's vital to use time and have time on our side. We must take advantage of patience, waiting to respond, or if you're a projector, waiting for the invitation. So as a generator, which is most of society, so the most people who are going to have this emotional solar plexus authority are going to be generators 
or manifesting generators. That means that you are a worker bee of the world. That means you live out of your gut. You are a generator. You are a hard worker. You have an intense amount of energy. However, you also are extremely emotional. Let me use my son for example. So I have two sons, okay? One son, they're both manifesting generators. One, however, has a sacral authority and the other has a solar plexus authority. He is a very emotional young man. I love him so much. And so as a parent, this is why it's so important to do your children's human design chart. Years ago, I would tell my youngest son, hey man, like you need to, we need to chill out for a second. We need to think about what's going on here. Like you, 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 we can't be freaking out like that. Wrong, wrong, wrong advice. Now, since I've done his human design chart years later, I've come to realize that when he has these emotional outbursts, we do not stop the emotion from happening in the moment because it's real in the moment. It's real. It's real as this, this wall as me is real. So since the emotion is happening, we must allow the emotion to be expressed. If you have a child that acts like this, I strongly invite you to allow the emotion to flow. You do not want to bottle it up because it's just going to explode. Now, if we can get our child to, to the point where they finally calm down after a period of time, time, time is our best friend with this authority. Once we get the kids to calm down, then, sorry about the shaking, then we're able to talk to them, ask them, what thoughts were you thinking before you got this? Because this is what's important to remember. As an emotional authority, it's not our gut that's getting us all manic or depressed or really upset or really low. It is our thoughts. It's our mind. It's this gate center here. And if things are being overthought or underthought, it's going to send it down and we're going to have that emotional roller coaster again. But regardless, it's happening in the moment. Once the child is having those freak out moments, let them freak out. It's happening. Whether it's real or not, doesn't matter. In that moment, with that emotion being expressed, it is real. Now, once the emotion subsides, once we finally have that solar plexus wave from up or low into the middle, then, then we can talk about it. Then we can make a decision. And I believe it's imperative for us to teach our children more and more, since this is the most common authority, that it's okay to express these emotions. We've been told most of our lives that it's not okay to get really upset about something or be depressed or get angry. Those are all transformational energies. They exist. Emotion is human. It exists. However, after we finally calm down and we get into a place of serenity, in a sense, which does happen when the middle of the wave, we find those calm places, then we can talk about what was going on. So after I did my youngest son's human design years ago, I would finally, listen, if you want to, you're going to freak out. I get it. I understand. It is real for you right now. Go do your thing. And he'll go, he'll do his whole, he'll get really upset. You know what I mean? And then, and then after he's finally walked around, he'll come talk like nothing happened in the world because to him, this emotional feeling is natural. This emotional being is, he doesn't know anything else because that's his solar plexus talking to him. Then though, I can talk to him about what was going on in his mind that set off that emotional turmoil. And they changed the game entirely because what's really happening is, is I'm allowing him to exist as who he is. And before that, before we did his charts, I wasn't allowing him to be the greatest version of who he was. A lot of individuals see that emotion as a negative. It's neither negative or positive. It's just the authority. So the strategy, once again, for generators is wait to respond. Time. Time's your best friend. Wait to respond. Allow the emotional roller coaster to subside. For projectors or manifestors, well, projectors specifically, waiting for the invitation. Um, as a projector, you already know everything like that. You already know how to fix. You, you can look at any problem and you know how to fix it. You just know how to do it. 
That's why you're so amazing as a projector. However, if you don't wait for the invitation, you're just super annoying. That's what it boils down to. My father, he's a projector. And I love my father a lot. He's a beautiful man. However, this man, he can fix anything too because he's a projector. They just naturally know how to fix it. But he has never learned how to wait for the invitation. And we are all designed, everyone else who's not a projector, we are designed to be off put by a projector who doesn't wait for the invitation. We're like, well, know it all. You don't know, whatever. It doesn't matter. It puts us off. We don't want to be around that energy. So waiting for the invitation if you're a projector. As a manifester, if you have an emotional solar plexus, it is following your heart, feeling your heart out, and understanding that the emotional roller coaster will subside. And to not take action until you get into that even place. Because as a manifester, you are the only one out of all the energy types who is meant to force their way. Meant to uh, clear the path. Okay, you have that outgoing aura where everyone else's aura is coming in. So you are meant to go down that path and forge the path. Waiting. Before you make that step to forge your path, make sure you're at that even keel before you move forward. So today we talked about the emotional solar plexus authority. We talked about it's okay to have the emotions. It's okay to express these emotions. To wait for the emotional wave to subside to you get into an even keel. And then, then make decisions. We talked about the three types of waves that exist as an emotional wave. We have the individual circuit, we have the tribal circuit, and we have the collective circuit. Individual is all expressed through you, in all honesty. It's how you as an individual exist. And, but those waves are, you have the full, full spectrum of the solar plexus. So that means your highs are really high and your lows, you're pretty bad. They get, and I don't say bad, but they get pretty low. Let's be honest here, okay? Uh, the tribal circuit is you are a person that's really affected by sex. You're someone who's really big into the family. You probably take care of your family more than likely. You're big about the community, really work with the community. And you let your emotional uh, behavior be affected by your family. And the third collective is the collective. And that is just the whole of humanity. But what is different with yours is you skyrocket the manic, but then immediately drop down to depressed. Um, it's definitely a roller coaster ride, but it's random because everything will be going good, and then out of nowhere, boom, roller coaster ride. If you have any questions whatsoever about human design, contact me at coach at 86worries.com. You can text me at 843-614-0991 or you can head over to my website, 86worries.com. If this interests you whatsoever, if you are someone who's doing the shadow work, if you are someone who is wanting to find or wanting to live as authentic as possible, human design. Most of the time, we're just working on our triggers. We're letting things trigger and then we look for it and then we deal with it and we let it go. If you are wanting to go deeper and really want to do the shadow work and you really want to integrate as a whole being, it's time to get your human design chart done. I'm not making this up. I, I do this for a couple of acquaintances. I've done charts for and every single chart. They're like, wow. Because when we start seeing those energy pathways, we can start working and understanding that this is who I am. This is my blueprint. These are the things that I've ignored about myself my entire life. So, if you would like an easier way of understanding who you are, human design is the lantern that shows the shadow side. And then we can work on it together. I'm very grateful for you coming today. Once again, we're going to be continuing this series next week of the authorities. I'm going to shake it up. You know what? Next week, we're going to do the heart center, the egoic authority. If you have a heart center and an egoic authority, this is definitely going to be the show for you. Thank you again. My name is Donald Groves. I'm the owner of 86 Worries. Namaste.